everyone. Welcome to the Mama Pop Quilt Shop Weekend Repair. What we have here is a quick little fix on a coat, shortening the sleeve, and a button repair on a pair of shorts. Stay tuned. Hi everyone. We have a fix on a coat here. We're just going to shorten the sleeve a little bit. It has, it's actually a two-parter, um, but the sleeve is too long for the customer, so I'm just going to take it up a bit. And uh, we discovered maybe about a half an inch would do it, so I'm going to do it all the way around because not only is it too long in here, it's also too long in the cup. So that should help hopefully alleviate the situation. But when you come to weekend repairs, you need to make sure you're matching your thread to your customer's product or your product as best you can. Um, I have a little collage of threads here. Usually I try and get them when they're on sale the best that you can, especially 50% off, grab one here, one there. You never know when you're gonna use it. So I had a few here and I wasn't really quite sure. I think we can clearly eliminate the, the purple and the orangey here, but these two reds were really close. And the best thing to do that I have discovered and even tips from my uh, local ladies at my fabric land said, um, and take a little bit of the thread out like you have here and match it late up to the original thread that is in the product or in your clothing and try best to match that thread don't try match the color of the outfit or your jacket or whatever because it's never gonna show so try and match the existing thread that is already in the coat or shirt or pants or whatever right so what I discovered was this one right here to me seemed to be the best it was re almost exact, maybe, like, you couldn't even tell. So if there are any stitches to be seen, you wouldn't be able to tell about the different colors. So don't, like, be using white on, you know, a navy blue or something like that. Just asking for trouble. So I'm just going to load it up in my machine here. Just give me one moment. I've already loaded the bobbin. You want to have matching on top and bottom, okay? Wake Mr. Nomi up here. Now you can either pin this the whole way or you know if you're pretty good at eyeball and a half an inch go for it i start from the under and then work all the way around and go back you don't want to leave any stitchy seams or up here like that okay so it's inside out make sure your your sleeve is tucked all the way in so you're not going to be able to catch that at all if you do then you know you have that handy little tool called the seam ripper <laughs> It's your friend, it's your enemy, it's both. All right, now, wait, oh, there we go. I was gonna say, now where was I? No, actually, I'd like to work from the other side. Okay, put the bulk, yeah, just put these threads away. Clean the mess up, Laura Lynn. There we go. Make sure you have it positioned under there as best you can. If you go super slow, if that's what makes you confident that you're getting the stitches all around and you're not looping anything up. You come right on that seam. I'm going to try and crease my stitches just a bit to kind of match the size that they have in here. To me, this looks like either a 3, 3.1, I don't know, maybe 3.2. So we'll go 3.1. Here's laid flat. Do your little back step. And you just come all the way around. Following the existing seam that's already there. You know, keep your foot right next to it or using this, this pre-existing seam as a guidance for your new seam. Okay. And just go slowly around. Like I said, make sure you're not getting any fold up on this side. But no fold up on this side and then stitching. You're, you know, then you got the seam ripper in your hand. So just take your time. Make sure it's laying flat. A few stitches. Make sure your needle is in the down position whenever you shift your material around. Okay? Because that way it holds it. It's kind of like a, a little lock, right? So maneuver it, push it, feel it, whatever you need to to make sure it's laying flat and you're not pinching anything. Right. Tricky there, just looks like it was starting to do that. 
It's because you're going on a curve, right? It's not you're like you're sewing a straight line. So that's that's the more intensity of how you have to control the fabric. It's making sure you're constantly sliding your hand underneath, making it lie flat against the bottom of your sewing machine. Or the, this part of your sewing machine. Okay, we're almost at the top. And that's where it starts to peak up. So make sure you're laying it flat. So we'll start getting you a little trouble here. I'm only going to lift my foot just a smidge because I think it was kind of pinched under there. Okay. It is a quick fix when you think about it. Best, and even things we can buy at the second hand store or hand me downs from friends or family. You know, don't turn that, you know, coat away, that silk coat or even a jean jacket or whatever. Alter it to fit you. Or find somebody to do it. I don't think we can recycle a whole lot more than what we do when it comes to clothing and stuff. Almost all the way around. So make this key to make sure your fabric is laying flat. Okay. And it's better to take too little than too much. So what I'll do is I'll do this on both sides. And then I'll put it off to the side and do my other alterations for this customer. And then when she comes and tries it on, if I have to take it in a little more, that's easier than having to, you know, take it all out and make sure you line up with your previous stitches. Do a little back step, stitch step, do the hokey hokey and turn yourself around. Alright, trim your thread. And I'll show you. See there's the original line. And then there's my line, okay? And it's just a little bit, and it's just enough. And then you make sure you, you now you now this is your turn. Oh good, look nice, nice seam match up on that. That's perfect. Make sure it didn't move anywhere. Take a little look around. Looks good. A little press, and we're rocking. We're gonna do the same on the other side. As soon as I unhook it from a chair. <laughs> I just noticed there was a pocket on the back. That was kind of cool. This is my pin from my original um, fitting with my customer. So I do it with safety pins. That way I don't poke them because they don't really like to be poked. Starting from the under pit, like your under pit seam there. Okay. Just make sure it's, you know, don't try and fight it. You know, that's. I know something when you got really slippery or silky or satiny or something like that. It wants to fight you all the time. It's like wrestling an alligator. And yet it's only fabric. Some days wrestling fabric is just as much dangerous as anything else in the world, I tell you. Just... Slow and steady, put it around, flattening your fabric. I'm pretty ready to how many stops and turns and pivots and shifts and whatever. Actually, that started to pinch, so I'm gonna take my. Um, and I'll show you right there. See? Right there. It pinched up the fabric. So I'm gonna rip it back to where it was laying flat, which is right about there. Okay. Just unpick those little threads and start up again. Don't panic. Just don't continue or you end up way more work for yourself. And that's the, you know, the pretty much the difficult part of working on curves. Just making sure you're not pinching the fabric from the underside. Okay, 
There's a few more of those ditches here. Sure you do a little back stitch to to lock those and I make sure extra that I'm not tucking my fabric under. Okay, I've gone about an inch past where I had already stitched. Okay, so I'm locking those, making sure it's laying flat. I think, that's, I think I went a little too far without flattening it last time, so. Alright, let's learn. Okay. Moving around. It's actually this part is a two part coat. This is the outer part, then there's an inner part that I have to do as well. And it's it's quite beautiful. I'm not sure if it's made out of felt or if it's wool or wool felt or whatever, but it's lovely and I can Imagine it really being excellent for our Canadian winters. It has some really fancy stitching on the shoulders, but I'm going to have to take that in, so that's too bad. your fingers too like when you're putting your fingers down on here you can tell whether there's a, a lump of fabric on the inside on the underside sorry stitches up with your previous ones that you'd started going around the other direction or in the same direction. Back step. Alrighty, and that is that done. Now make sure you take a little looky-loo. Perfect seam match. Excellent. It's all looking good. Fantastic. All right. So that one is done. I'm just going to fold it here. That'll be for her try on. Okay. And then this right here. It's just a pair of little uh, jeans that has lost its little clip. There's two of them. They go in together. As you can see right here, to help loop it to hold the pants on. Well, this one seems to be missing one. And they're easy enough to purchase at your little fabric store. Probably even your local little everything mart. Just line it up like the previous one. Okay, making sure you kind of keep this right there. These two heads in line with each other. So when they're together, they're both going to latch in to where they need to be and hold secure. So got my needle and thread. I got black because that seemed that we had best to do. I'm coming from the underside first. I'm going to try and stitch as much as I can just on this fabric here not to go through because you can't really see the other one. So, And that's just the tricky part. You just do little loops. Kind of fill in the little hole really just by stitching the fabric down or the little tab to the fabric. Okay. Five or six times in each little one. There's three little tabs to do, and it should be all right. And instead of going from tying it off, I slip under the fabric to the next hole, and then work that one. Okay. 
Make sure you get your lane straight. Okay. And under. Almost is our weekend repair. That's two little fixes. Right. One more for that one. And then go on under to the next hole. Come up and stitch it down tight. Do not poke your fingers or your thumbs. Couldn't see there. Nice and secure. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the middle one, do one more, and then I'm gonna tie it off. Okay. And I just loop through what you've one of your loops. Oops, helps if you loop it through. Uh, pull tight, and then I do another one. Loop it through, pull tight, and then just slip the stitches underneath and give a little trim. Oops, it's safety pin on the loose. Okay, and that, my dear peoples, is me as my oh, there it is. Um, is our weekend fix for the Mama Pop Quilt Shop. Thanks very much, and I'm so glad you joined me today. See you next week. Bye.